Good evening. Man, good to be back with you. We have a, we have a group, I don't know how many, but we have a group gone to um, Creekside. Is that Greenville? Yeah. For uh, the area-wide, youth area-wide tonight. So uh, we have a great, a great attendance even though they're still gone. That's, it's wonderful. So, um, man, you, you just blessing our, our children um, with supporting them, our kingdom kids, and just keep up the good work with that. Um, uh, Wesley, great job reading. Him and his dad came up to me this morning, and they were like, is it, is it Matthew 5, 3, 2? That's what I did last week. And I'm like, that's right. You're going to read that till you get it right. And <laughs> I, okay, I was joking with him, and he knows it. This kid reads perfectly, doesn't he? Amen. Actually, he's going to read it until we get it right. That's more like it, isn't it? That's right. And so um, I, I know one guy, they, the members went up to the preacher, and they were like, preacher, I mean, that, you did that sermon last week, and you did that sermon the week before as well. And he's like, I'm going to keep preaching it till you get it right. You know, it's like, I'm glad we don't do that, right? Um, so the Sermon on the Mount would be one of those for sure that we would just need to keep on. We need to keep on reading it because we don't always get it right. Um, before we jump into this lesson for this evening, <clears throat> I want to let you know, ladies, uh, there's a, and there's info back there on the, bulletin board, but the Ladies' Day for Centerville Road, who supports us um, greatly, their Ladies' Day is this Saturday. My wife's going. If you'd like to go and you want to ride with her or whatever, um, see Stephanie right afterwards, and, and she'll, she'll let you know what time to leave and stuff like that. And so uh, if you are going to go to that Ladies' Day, you need to RSVP by tomorrow. And so um, check that. Uh, there's a flyer back there to to know where to do that. Um, next Sunday, um, Stephanie will be here. I'm going to be gone, going, leaving on Friday with um, our two daughters, and we're going out to Arizona with a group of kids from Fried Harneman University and a uh, mission trip all week out in Arizona. It's uh, on the reservation out there, and it's a little community called Cayenta, and the church is there in Cayenta, and some of you know about this, right, Dennis? And um, <clears throat> it's a wonderful place, and they're going to have some stuff for us to do all week long. And so if you don't mind praying for us, that means next Sunday I'll be gone. But in my stead, two wonderful men. Robert Dotson will be back. You know and love him. He's from the Northwest Church in Fort Worth. He's a wonderful individual and a good friend of mine. And so he'll teach class, my class back there on Sunday morning. And then so Sunday morning he'll preach. And then this ev uh, that evening on the 26th, our brother Tim O'Bannon will have the lesson uh, that evening, and you'll not want to miss that as well. And so I uh, just kind of wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on coming up. Also, and I'm just, just kind of happy to say it, today marks our fifth year today of being here. Uh, we started in, yeah, March, of, March 18th is when we started in 2018. And so we have truly grown to love you deeply. And so uh, we just want to, allow the Lord to keep a good thing, his thing continuing on uh, for many more years. And so happy to get to say that and stand before you five years later. Tonight, blessed are the meek. We're going to be looking at blessed are the meek. Someone said through the, through the first three beatitudes, we noticed that the natural man finds no happiness or blessedness in spiritual poverty, mourning, or meekness, that these are only a blessing for the spiritual man. So did you hear this? I want to repeat it, okay? Through the first three Beatitudes that we've covered so far, and we're on the third one, aren't we? We notice that the natural man, I guess you could say the worldly man, the natural man finds no happiness or blessedness in spiritual poverty, mourning, or weak, uh, meekness. We don't want to say weakness there. These are only a blessing for the spiritual man, those who are new creatures in Jesus, end of quote. I just like that a lot because the idea is you go to someone worldly and start reading this, blessed are the poor in spirit. 
That doesn't make any sense. Blessed are those who mourn. What? I don't want to mourn. We don't want to cry or grieve or mourn anything deeply. That's a, we studied that last week, didn't we? It's a deep mourning is, or grieving. And tonight, blessed are the meek, because the world really kind of does see the meek as weak, and it's just not true. Someone also said, if you meet someone who claims to be a Christian, but displays and, and desires none of these traits, you may rightly wonder about their salvation, because they do not have the character of kingdom citizens. This is, this Matthew 5 stuff, this is kingdom citizen stuff that we're talking about. He goes on, but if they claim to have, but if they claim to have mastered these attributes, you may question their honesty. So why do we read Matthew 5, 3 through 12, three times in a row now? Why are we going to read it three more times in a row and then three more times in a row? Because you'll not master these. I wish you could, because if you could, I could. But we won't master them, but we can live in them, and we can continue to work on them. Isn't that right? We continue to practice these attributes that really strictly belongs to the spiritual man. I use that as mankind, to the spiritual woman or man. And so he says, our Lord says, blessed are the meek. Your translation might be like mine. New American Standard Bible, 1995, it says, blessed are the gentle. So those who are meek, what does it mean? Let's look at this for a little bit. Those who are meek, what does it mean? Is meekness weakness? Well, we know it's not, but how does the world portray meekness? Probably as weak, probably as spineless and submissive in their terms or maybe ineffective but what does it mean to be a man or a woman of meekness i will tell you we don't really have an exact or a good english term or or word for this word meek uh, that's found in the greek language um, our english terms gentle or our English word meek comes to the closest, uh, closest to its translation. Sometimes within a context it can mean soft or mild, but it has the idea of a proper balance between anger and indifference, of a powerful personality properly controlled. Humility also plays within the word. So there's a lot of our English ideas in text, words, that play into the word meekness. In the Old Testament, the meek were those who wholly and solely depended upon and relied upon God rather than their own strength, especially to defend against injustice. Therefore, meekness toward evil people means God knowing means knowing that God is permitting the injuries of the inflicted or that they inflict and that he is using them to purify his elect and that he will always deliver his elect in his timing. And so gentleness or meekness is actually the opposite of self-assertion or assertiveness. It's opposite of self-interest. It stems from trusting in God's goodness and control over a given situation. The gentle person, the meek person, is not occupied with self at all, really. And there's another definition for it as we talk through this. Probably the one that you've heard the most. Strength under control, right? I think there's three ways to take this Greek word meek. Number one, it could be said this way, happy is the man who gets angry at the right time and never angry at the wrong time. That would be built into this word meekness. 
It's a sense of righteous anger for when wrong is done to others, when there is an injustice. In general, the Greeks considered meekness a vice, actually, because they failed to distinguish it from servility. You see, to be meek toward, towards others implies freedom from malice and a vengeful spirit, one said. And so happy is the man who gets angry at the right time and never angry at the wrong time. But number two, I think it could also be said this way. Happy is the man who has the humility to know his own ignorance and his own weakness and his own need. Happy is the man. See, that's not, that's not for the natural man. That concept is not for the worldly man. Because listen to it again. Blessed or happy is the man, or bliss is the man, who has the humility to know his own ignorance, his own weakness, and his own need. It's the sense of knowing who the creator is versus the created. That's the idea of meekness. I mean... I guess you could say that the more you focus on the creator, the more meek you become. Because the creator has a way of putting us in our spot of where we belong. This is why sometimes we leave the church building, we walk out the doors feeling a little weak maybe. Sometimes we leave feeling built up and encouraged. Sometimes we leave this church building and we got to go lick our wounds a little bit, right? Well, the Word of God has a way of doing that. But it's all in light of who God is through His Word, and it brings us back down to the level that we're supposed to be on, and it'll bring you to a spirit or a level of meekness in your life. So number three, it can also be said, happy is the man who has every instinct and every impulse and every passion under control. That, that could be said of meekness. It's kind of that word that we've all learned for an animal who has learned self-control or been taught self-control. That one answers to the reins, if you will. When I grew up, we... we uh, I grew up around horses, and several years, I remember as a, as a little boy, we would get up at 5.30 or 6 and go out to the farm where these horses, our horses were kept, out at this lady's farm out there, and we would go out, and every morning we would be breaking these horses, and we were creating meekness in them, if you will, gentleness. The power is still there, but it's all under control and under the reins, if you will, now. And the only way that that happens, brethren, is that we continue to submit ourselves to, to the control of God and His power through the Word. Someone said, rather than being those of no backbone, the meek are those who, having been tamed by God, are the masters of their own spirits. It's pretty good. One boy was asked, who are the meek? And his reply, I thought, was good. Those who give soft answers to tough questions. That's pretty good. But, you know, we have a couple of examples of those who are meek in Scripture, don't we? It was said of Moses in Numbers 12 and verse 3. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Some translations, very gentle. More than all the people are humble. Also, I told you, humility fits. There's a lot of our English terms that fit into this word. And Moses was one of them, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. And, of course, another example is who? Your Lord and Savior, right? We quoted Matthew 11 this morning. I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's our Savior. All that power in control. Both Moses and Jesus could be blazingly angry, but their anger was on a leash to be released when the time, only when the time was right. 
So those who are meek, how do I practice it then? How do I practice meekness? Well, I think three things. Kind of built off of us understanding the idea of meekness. Number one is the meek get angry only at the right time in the right way. I think we can put that into practice. Because I know most of us get angry at things at the wrong time in the wrong way. Wouldn't you agree with me? We all do that. Well, being meek then would be getting angry only at the right time in the right way. We would call that righteous anger. I think that's one way of practicing it. Number two, the meek are gentle because humility is driving them. And number three, the meek are self-controlled in all areas because they are controlled by God. They are God-controlled. So we are controlled. We are to be meek and therefore in self-control in all areas because we are God-controlled. This would present the picture of a lioness, a lioness, a mother lion with her teeth. Meekness would be the idea of her taking those teeth, that mouth, and gently picking up her little cub with the same teeth that she uses to shred a zebra. That plays into this idea of meekness. Being controlled underneath God in all ways, with our anger, with things that are not just in all ways we are in control because we're God controlled. I just want to say a point about this inherit the earth because he says here, blessed are the meek or the gentle for they shall inherit the earth. This phrase is probably from Psalm 37 and verse 11 because the psalmist says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the, abundance, in the abundance of peace. The meek shall inherit the earth. There's a lot of debate about what this means, inherit the earth. Um, I'm not a guy that feel, I don't feel like I have to get on forums or get into debates with people about things like this because this is one of those things, whether you think I'm right or I think you're wrong or think you're right and vice versa, that either way, God's got it under control and God's going to give us exactly what he's going to give us, right, when we're meek. But they shall inherit the earth. Perhaps it's a figure of speech to help us understand um, how much better king, the kingdom of God is and kingdom of God living is rather than the kingdom of men. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I do know that Peter talks about a new earth in chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness will, will dwell. Maybe it plays into that concept of the coming of Jesus. But I like what Spurgeon said years ago. I had only to look upon it, he says, quote, I had only to look upon it all as the sun shone upon it. And then to look up into heaven and say, my father, this is all thine. And therefore, it is all mine. For I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. So in this sense, the meek-spirited man inherits the whole earth. That's pretty good too. I think the idea is those who are meek, God is going to give them what he owns, what he has, to enjoy, to be blessed by it. Either way, whatever it means exactly, because we love to put human terms to concepts like this. Either way, the blessings are going to be ours if we're striving to be meek and have meek hearts. Only the meek will be given the capacity to truly enjoy the blessings of this world 
and the next. I know that for sure. And so meekness. So I challenge you tonight, as we close this out, in what areas of your life do you need to work on meekness? Your power under control, what God has given you being under the control, you are in control of it because you are under the control of God. All of your desires, all of your passions, all of your anger, all of your emotions, you are in control of those things and therefore you have a gentle and humble spirit because God is controlling you. Brethren, that's where we want to be. So I love that song that Brett just led a while ago. Lord, take control. Did you notice the words? He's something like my heart, my soul, my body, all you. Everything about me under your control. That has to do with meekness for sure. If we can help you in any way, that's what the family of God's here to do. If anybody wants to become a Christian tonight, don't go another day. If you've been thinking about it, do it tonight. Put Christ on in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life because God sent his son to die for every one of us that we might live eternally with him. If you're looking for that, we'll wait around here with you and rejoice with you as you do so as we stand and as we sing together.